Oh, sorry for the sweaty face. Just got done with the gym. Um, all right, so I'm gonna try to be as objective as I can with this because it's definitely a little still difficult to talk about. But um, so a little background. Um, my uh, so I'm ethically non-monogamous, and uh, Tanya's as well. And uh, or at least she says she is. So I'm assuming she is. Have to trust her on that. Um, but uh, my primary partner of four years, I've known her for five years and uh, we were together for four years. She died back in uh, March. So that was rough. Um, I had suppressed a lot of emotions. You know, I've lost a lot of friends uh, either in combat or to suicide. And uh, you know, my mom died at like, I think she was like 45. I don't really remember the dates, but um, you know, I hadn't cried over that, so I just kind of shut everything down for like literally probably two decades. And um, so after Donna died, um, I realized that I'd been shutting down my emotions and uh, I needed to be more uh, open emotionally and emotionally vulnerable to people because like we knew we loved each other and we told each other and all that stuff, but I didn't realize just how much I loved her until she was gone or dying. Um, we had honestly planned on, uh, moving to Ireland and cause she's from Ireland or she was from Ireland. So we were planning on moving to Ireland and building a house there on her, uh, father's property. So that was, that was going to be the future. And she'd just gotten her finances together and like she had, had no debt. I was really proud of her. But anyways, after she passed, so I'm really picky with the kind of, uh, people I get with. So for me, looks are very secondary, um, it depends on who you are as a person first. So if, uh, if you're an asshole, I'm not going to get with you, right? It's just the way it is. I don't care how hot you are. So, um, so about three months, three or four months after she passed, um, uh, one of the, so we used to do like these naked pool parties together every now and then. It's like a once every two month thing. And there's a group that's, uh, you know, they're body positive and they're just real easy going and there's no pressure and there's no, you know, cause a lot of those groups, there's always one person there that's a little bit rapey or something, but nothing like that. Really respectful of boundaries and all that, all that good stuff. So about three months after she died, I got invited to one of these things through four months. And, um, so I went over there and had a good time, you know, um, I realized, okay, maybe it's time to get back out there. So I don't do the online dating. I've done Tinder before, like way back in the day, and it's just a dumpster fire, but I found Field, which F-E-E-L-D, which is a dating uh, website for people who are polyamorous or ethically non-monogamous. So I figured I'd give that a shot. So I got on there and I matched with uh, this cute black girl within like an hour of being on there, which was shocking, because that's usually not how that works with all my dating with guys, but... Uh, so anyways, I matched with her, she, cause I'd been brutally honest on my profile and put everything I was looking for. I was like, I'm looking for a primary partner to share my life with, you know, I, uh, it's like I lost my primary partner back in March. So I'm pretty sure I put all that stuff on my profile, but, um, so anyways, this black girl, like she, uh, she's really cute and all. And she was kind of, it looked like she was what I was looking for. And she read my profile and was like, this is what I'm looking for. This is great. Uh, she's like, I have one question. Are you vaccinated? LOL. And I was like, oh no. I was like, well, I did 10 years in the military and I figured what's two more shots. She immediately unmatched me. So I was like, okay, I must have dodged a bullet there. But anyways, uh, matched with a few more people and over the next day and a half and, uh, talked to, talked to them all and, um, just wasn't what I was looking for. So, uh, I think it was like day two or three. I, I got up and checked and Tanya had matched with me. So I hadn't matched with her. I had paid for the service to know who matched. So I was like, okay. So I looked at her profile and uh, I liked I liked what she had written in her bio and everything else like that. She was objective and brutally honest on that stuff. That's all traits I was looking for. So uh, uh, I matched with her and we started talking. So we talked over text for a while and then I got her number and then we were talking over uh, voice messages and everything like that. And, uh, I told her what I was doing and all that stuff. Cause I'd gotten back in the gym after Donna passed cause I needed to work out my, uh, you know, grief on that stuff. But I did go through grief, grief counseling and all that good stuff. So, um, I pretty much, it still hurts. Like there's still days I look over in, in my car and like expect to see her, but she's not there. So, um, 
So I told Tanya, I was like, well, I don't really do the whole dating thing. I was like, I really like to go do something physical with a potential partner before we go anywhere. And I was like, and I am demisexual. So, you know, I need to kind of get to know you better. So um, we met up, we went rock climbing for the first time. She could obviously keep up, it was great. And then we went to a local kava bar here and talked for about three, probably three hours. So it was really good, she could carry a conversation. She was really honest and uh, just, just really outgoing and upfront. So I was like, holy shit, I can't believe I found another woman with Donna's, like the same type of values that she had, you know? Cause I, I honestly, it took me about 30, uh, what would that be? Like 33, 34 years to find a woman like Donna. And then, uh, you know, I didn't think I was going to find another one like her. So, or at least with those values. So Tanya seemed to have it. So we kept talking over the next uh, couple days and then she came over to watch a movie and uh, things went from there. And it was funny because she was like, you know, we started kissing everything like that. And she was like, do you usually get into people's pants this fast? And I was like, well, I was like, to be honest with you, I was like, I really like you as a person. I do not want to get emotionally attached to you and then find out we're not sexually compatible. I was like, so I was pretty much like, it's up to you, but I think us getting naked and seeing where it goes would be a good first start. So we did, and it was great. And uh, sexual compatibility was there, which was awesome. Um, so that was good. So over the next uh, couple months, obviously, she introduced me to uh, the strongman thing, which I thought was cool because um, the whole powerlifting thing never really appealed to me. I don't want to lift a barbell up and down all day for com competition or whatever. Um, but it reminded me, strongman reminded me of like farm work growing up as a kid. So, um, so anyways, I thought that was really cool. And uh, she had mentioned that there was a lot of pushback from, I guess the pushback from the strongman community about her trying to do her own stuff or whatever. And so I was supporting her in that as much as I could. And, uh, you know, and that's the other thing when, I t when we met, I told her, cause she was like, I only have scraps of time. I was like, that's fine. I'm retired. I literally have completely flexible time. I was like, so I'll work around your schedule. That's not an issue. So throughout it, she had concerns. She was like, uh, I don't know if I'm, you know, meet everything you need in a partner. She was like, I don't know if I want to be called a primary partner. I was like, well, as far as you meeting everything I need, I was like, let me worry about that. I was like, you're right now you're meeting all my needs. And I fell for her really hard. Like, and I knew part of it was from, um, uh, Donna and like, expecting not to find someone else like that again. And so I knew that was part of it. And we talked about it and she was, you know, she's rational. So she understood. Um, that's the other thing. I made myself very emotionally vulnerable with her. I mean, I told her about Donna and I was crying and like, sh there's very few women out there that I've been emotionally vulnerable with that have not left because they're like, Oh, this guy must be weak or something. I'm like, I literally have four tours in combat zones and 10 years in the military, two years at the air force Academy. You're like clearly not weak. So, um, but so Tanya had mentioned a couple times that she, she mentioned one guy, oh, I was talking really passionately about something and I forget what it was, but it was something I was excited about. And, um, she, you know, I'd sent her a voice message and she sent me back a voice message and she was like, okay, that tone of voice is like something that my ex used to do, um, and I didn't like, so I was like, oh shit. All right. So I should have like dug into that deeper, but it was still new. So I didn't want to really dig in. Um, cause that's the other thing too. Like I do have a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling. I do know the theories. Um, I don't like to analyze people because it just, it doesn't go any, like, it's not healthy, right? You don't want to analyze someone in a relationship. Um, so you got to shut that side of you down. Maybe I should have analyzed her more. I don't know. But, um, uh, I know I'm rambling here. It's a lot. Just, uh, I also have short-term memory issues, so that's fun. But, um, uh, what else? So what else, what else was it through the relationship? Oh, so that was the other thing. I was like, well, to be honest with you, I was like, I haven't found anything about you that annoys me, which is really kind of scary. I was like, that's a little bit scary, a little bit weird. Um, I haven't run into this before. And I was like, and I'm also, you know, I'm in deep with you. Like I feel safe with you. She's the first woman I've ever been with that I felt safe around. I always felt like, okay. I mean, even Donna, Donna was awesome, but she was 110 pounds soaking wet. And you know, my, my thought was, Hey, if the freaking ax murderer comes in through the front door, like she can't really do a lot to help. Right. 
I can teach her to shoot. <laughs> That's about it. But, uh, and I, I mentioned that to Tanya. I was like, you're the first woman I've ever been with that I feel safe around. And she was like, well, yeah. I was like, because I know you, I'm not going to see your cowardly feet going out the window when the axe murder comes in the door. She's like, oh, no, we're going to fuck that dude up together. So, uh, so I had already started lifting weights again, but she got me uh, hooked up with strongman Steve uh, Coach. And uh, so I started lifting weights heavier. So I was getting bigger and stronger. And because um, that's the other thing, man, I'm, I'm looking at back and I'm, I'm trying to think of what else could have triggered this. So. Went with her through several competitions, supported her and all of that stuff when she was competing. Um, she said I did a you know good job as a as a quote unquote handler. So um, I was like, that's good. When it came to the bedroom, like I got way kinkier with her than I have with anyone else. Like I I literally trusted her with a strap on, which I've never ever done before. Um, so I went through like anal dilation and all that stuff for her, you know, because I knew that was a part of her that she needed, and. So I'm like, look, it's probably going to be fun for me too. So I'm just going to do this and see. So I had, I had sent her photos. I had trusted her with all that stuff. And uh, and I still trust her with that stuff. I mean, I know she's I know she's fundamentally an awesome person. So, um, so yeah, I trusted her with a lot. And, you know, she trusted me with some light bondage, which was cool. And uh, just, I mean, it was nothing she couldn't get out of. Like, I, I knew... She had mentioned specifically that her ex, because that was the other thing. She's living with her ex, which I thought was weird, but I was like, look, you know, they're, um, uh, she said they're, uh, what'd she say, nesting partners or whatever. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, but if he gets with another person and like moves, like you're going to be alone. So are you doing this for money or like what is going on? But, and that's the other thing too. Like as the conversation went on, I found out she had spent months trying to get this guy back. Um, fuck, I forget his name terrible with names anyways so uh yeah so that was odd but i was like hey you know she's rational she's logical she's intelligent I'm like i know she's only got a 10th grade education but intelligence and education are two different things which you know every now and then she'd get down on herself about and uh, i tell her that i'm like look intelligence and education are two different things like you're an intelligent person you know you can educate yourself so um all right, so the day of the... So she had been putting together this uh, strong woman or strong man competition over at Crate, which I thought was awesome. Um, she had like 40 female athletes out there competing, and she was bringing in um, uh, people from different areas like CrossFit and powerlifting and all that stuff, which, you know, from what she told me, she was getting like some pushback from the community for doing that because they wanted to keep it pure, quote-unquote. But I don't know. That's I'm not, I'm not privy to all that stuff, so... Um, that's just what I seem to pick up on. So anyways, uh, about maybe two weeks before the show, she had to get these shirts made and all her sponsors logos were bitmaps or, uh, raster images and, um, in color. So she needed them all turned white and vectorized and, uh, redesigned so they print out on the shirts. So I have a very broad skill set. I can weld, I can do carpentry, I can do framing, I can do block, I can operate heavy equipment, I can shoot, I can do all this stuff, right, so I'm, I'm also a computer fucking nerd, so I was like, I can do this, so it took me about 12 hours, and I got it done, and it turned out freaking fabulous, I had to redesign all the logos and everything so the lines would, uh, would fit in that, in that screen printing, so I had to figure out how screen printing worked, and then realized that it was about 36, the equivalent of about 36 dots per inch, so, or pixels per inch, so then I, um, uh, took the design that I'd done, scaled it down to 36 pixels per inch, figured out which lines weren't going to print, and, like, did all that. So, got it all done. 12 hours. So, um, the day before the competition, she asked me if I wanted to come up and, and help her. I was like, absolutely, because I was, you know, if she had free time, I would, I'd be there for her. So, it's only a 32-minute drive. That was the other thing I told her. I was like, look, I, I would not drive 32 miles or 32 minutes one way for just anybody, you know, and sometimes an hour depending on traffic so because you know she mentioned that as a long drive or something like that but I was like you're worth it and that's what I always tell her is you're worth it so she passed all the like she had no green flag she passed all the tests that I gave her which were dumb little tests that you got to test people on just to make sure they're good which I need to stop doing that apparently because it triggers people and that's the thing I got spoiled with Donna because Donna the relationship was so easy 
and she was just so freaking educated and intelligent and like she was in the STEM field and uh, just a very logical person, which was awesome. And you know, if, if something happened or we, we started, uh, we never really fought, we debated though. And if she felt like something was off, she'd take 72 hours and think about it, which, oh my God, no one else does that, you know? And then she would decide if it was her issues coming up or if it was something that we needed to address and talk about. So, and it's usually 50-50 roughly. And uh, we just grew stronger in our relationship, like dealing with this stuff and moving through it. So, um, anyways, so got the shirt design done. Went up there. Uh, she asked me if I wanted to go up there and help her the day before. I was like, absolutely, I'll be there. So I came up. Uh, helped her set up as much as I could. She was apologetic because she was like, I know there's, uh, you know, I, would, I had planned on more stuff, but this is all we got. I was like, it's fine. And um, she did tell me, she was like, don't take anything I say personally the day of the event. Or no, I think she woke up. We woke up that day. I don't know, details are foggy. Um, went to bed with her that night, slept with her since everything was good. And that's the other thing. Like she doesn't usually you know, she would want to sleep in the same bed sometimes, which I'm all about. But at the same time, when we first got together and we both, uh, kept each other awake cause we're both light sleepers. She was like, you have to be an a Cause she talked about, um, assets and liabilities in relationships. And she was like, you have to be, she's like, I always think of people as assets or liabilities. And I was like, well, when it comes to a relationship, it's both like, you're going to be an, a liability at some point and you're going to be an asset. Hopefully you're an asset more than your liability. Like that's, that's life. This is real life. It's like you're 40, come on, you know, you know this. Um, but anyways, so, uh, fuck. I'm having a hard time staying focused here. Um, oh yeah, so we slept together in the same bed. Slept okay, I think, at least I did. Um, she got up early. She was like, let's fucking do this, like she always does, which was cool, and uh, got up went out there with her, um, helped her start setting, uh, start setting up. But that's the other thing with her, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to keep my boundaries too. Like, um, for example, we were at the motorcycle track and she wanted me to film, uh, her racing. And, um, oh, that was the other thing too. She tried Delta eight for the first time at my place. And she said the next day that she had like a fleeting moment where she thought I might kill her or something. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I was like, what is wrong? I was like, but I just chalked it up to like basic paranoia because that happens sometimes. Um, but apparently there was a lot more there to unpack. So, um, so I went down to, God, I'm losing my place. Yeah, I'm sorry for rambling, man. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, oh, so I had to keep my boundaries up too. So, uh, because, you know, she, and she told me that she was like, you, you got to tell me if there's something I'm doing that I don't, you don't want me to do or something. But anyways, um, so she'd asked me to record her, uh, on her motorcycle riding around the track. Well, I started recording or sort of practicing with some other motorcycles and like, she like started, I mean, not like in a bad way, but just getting on my case. She was like, bro, I don't need videos of other motorcycles on my phone. And I was like, go stand over there. And it's like, I'm just practicing. But anyways, so little things like that, right? It's just, She's a tour de force, man. Like you've got to, like she'll run over you. She'll steamroll you if, you if you let her. So, um, just is what it is. And I'm not a doormat. So, um, and we talked about this. So day of, uh, she wanted me to like, oh, I was walking back cause I was, I was going to hit the gym up real quick at like 7 AM and she handed me a clipboard and she was like, I need you to, or she was like, let the cars in or whatever. I was like, look, I don't know who's coming in. I'm going to just let all the cars in. I was like, this is not a good job for me. I was like, and I need to go hit the gym. So figured I already helped them out. You know, I don't know what I'm doing as far as that setup goes. And it was clearly like, it was very organized. You know, she wouldn't let me help the night before with all the organization because she's got a certain way of doing things, which I get. And that's the other thing too. She would tell me do less because she would ask me for help with something and I would just do it until it was done. And she'd be like, that's not how I wanted you to do it. I need it done this way or whatever. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, it is what it is. Like, so she would tell me to do less. So I was actively trying to do less. <laughs> so Jesus Christ, man. Um, 
So I don't do well with crowds, but you know, I went to the competitions and all that stuff with her, and uh, you know, it just it makes me ornery sometimes. It's, it's nothing crazy. So um, I just don't like a lot of people. <laughs> but went to the competitions with her, supported her as much as I could. That was fine. Uh, was out of crate all day. You know, that was that was okay. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't do well with crowds. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Um, I also hadn't taken my meds in a couple days, so maybe that, maybe I was starting to get that little paranoia going on or something. I have no idea. But anyways, uh, we get done with the competition, so I supported through the whole thing. It was really cool. It was really awesome to see, like, people that hadn't done this stuff before compete, and uh, it was really cool to see, like, these, these people that didn't know they could do this, like, actually do it. So it was really awesome. So she gets done, and... Uh, she's on the mic and she's thanking the sponsors for their support and like everyone for helping her on that stuff. And she mentioned anything about the shirts, which was like, you know, one of the most visible things out there. So it was petty, but I started thinking in my head, I was like, Oh fuck. I was like, is she one of these women that like, she's passed all the other flags. I was like, is she one of these people that just takes everything her guy does for granted? I was like, well shit. I was like, cause now at this point I'm like fully in love with her. I could see a future together with her. Uh, like, I'm in deep at this point. So, you know, and now I'm getting scared that, oh, maybe she's not who I thought she was, you know. But I'm usually pretty good at reading people, or so I thought. Uh, so anyways, um, uh, two of her friends were like, uh, thanks for the shirt, sorry she didn't mention you. And Tanya says that they said that I was complaining about it first. I don't know, it's possible, who knows. I, everything's kind of like a little bit foggy, so. Um, so I go to, oh, I've been going back and forth from the, the bar at Crate there to get um, uh, drinks for people and all that stuff that want, that wanted it. So I went and got a uh, margarita that they had made up, and I got through about half of it, and uh, Tiny came, comes over and sits down next to me. Well, I, being a dick, uh, slapped, you know, clapped her on the back, and I did it harder than I meant to but it wasn't any harder than I would do to anyone else who's her size and 5'8", or 5'10", because um, that's another thing she was like, she was like, would you do that to a smaller woman? I was like, no, I wouldn't do that to a smaller man. I was like, it's not a gender thing, it's a freaking physical thing. I was like, you're a strong woman. I was like, sometimes I forget that you're still a woman. Like, I get that, like, I have to remember that. You know, and I am working out more, so I am getting stronger, and like, there's a lot there. Um, you know, I'm not on steroids. I'm not on uh, anything crazy. You know, I take testosterone just just as a uh, therapy replacement. I don't overdo it. I take exactly enough to get me to 1,200, and that is it. So it's like point, uh, point four five milliliters twice a week or something like that. But anyways, it's low dose. So um, clapped on the back and was like, hey, I was like, look at those shirts. I was like, those shirts turned out great. Who did those for you? Who did all that work? You know, and then I immediately f realized how much of an asshole I sounded. So I tried to smooth it over. I was like, look, in all seriousness, I was like, this is great. It, was, it turned out really well. Like, I'm proud of you and all that stuff. Because she likes being told she's proud of. Um, that's a thing for her. So I tried to do that, you know, if, as long as I remembered. Um, she didn't really say anything. She got up and she left. So I followed her out and I realized from her body language that I should probably leave, which was a huge mistake. I should have never left. Um, but I figured maybe I, I was like, clearly she's been, a, she did tell me at the start of the day not to take anything she said personally. And I told her the same because I knew I was going to be like a, under a little bit of stress and all that stuff. Um, or just like ready to get out of there. And, uh, but apparently she didn't hear me. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, so she goes in to get a coffee. I follow her in and, uh, I tell her, you know, like I said, I'm realizing from body language that I should probably bounce, uh, cause you know, it's probably not good to be around her at this point. Um, and you know, I was feeling my own feelings and I was like, I got to figure out what this is because I'm not used to dealing with my own emotions. And I have since shut them back down because I'll be damned if I'm ever emotionally vulnerable with another woman like that again. Uh, because I think she started taking it as like emotional abuse. Cause that's the other thing I talk about male and female dynamics a lot, which I'm trying not to do anymore because it's not worth it. And like people don't listen. It doesn't matter if it's objectively true for the population between the first and third quartile, the bell curve. Most people don't even understand what that means. They don't understand statistics. I keep forgetting that I have a fucking master's degree 
of, in science from this and I know how to I know how to tear apart research and look at bias and uh, all this stuff. But anyways, um, it sucks, man. Sometimes I wish I would have stuck in with a high school degree and never gotten fucking educated because the more you know, the more you realize you don't know shit about shit and you're just trying to put shit together and understand the world. And instead of just being like, well, it is what it is. Like, I'm always trying to fucking understand, like, why is this happening? What is going on, etc. So anyways, I don't know if that makes more sense. So, um, I, I leave, I drive home or, and, uh, you know, as I'm leaving the parking lot, I text her. I was like, let's talk in a couple days. Cause I figured we should probably get, give me a couple days to like, think about what I'm feeling. And like, am I doing the math in my head? Right? Like, is she really this person or is, did she just slip up? Is she just tired? Like she passed all the other flags, bro. So she's probably good. Um, well, she called me later that night and I asked her, I was like, you say you love me. I was like, so I was like, why do you love me? And she told me why she loved me. And in my head, all I heard was what you can do for me, how you make me feel. I get that. But I was like, I love you for who you are as a human being. I love you for your heart, your soul, like who you are as a person. I was like, that's why I love you. I was like, I don't love you for what you can do for me or how you make me feel. Um, but she was, she clearly was exhausted. She wasn't hearing what I said. So she wasn't hearing what I was trying to say. Maybe I didn't have the right words anyways. Um, which does happen clearly. Um, so she, oh, I apologized for what I did. I had no idea how much it actually impacted her. And that's another big problem. So A, I didn't stick around. I should have fucking stuck around. B, I had no idea how that came across to her. Like, no idea. I knew I was being a snarky fucking asshole, but like, I didn't realize it had triggered a bunch of fucking trauma in her. She had been physically abused a couple times. All I knew is that she'd been thrown into a wall by a dude. Like, but the way she talked about it, they also used to spar doing Muay Thai together and she would blow it off as like, well, I'm a big girl, so it wasn't really a big deal. So I didn't realize how much emotional issues she has with this stuff throughout the conversation like i i can send you if you want to send me your number i will send you all of the uh voicemails messages and emails and i'll try to do it in order and um bro like i went back through and read object well i'll, I'll get to this um fuck so like i said she wasn't really hearing what i was saying but i did apologize she didn't hear the apology, which is whatever. I mean, it, it, what happened happened. So, um, it's a lot of, a lot of factors on both sides. So I know I have, uh, some emotional damage from Donna and from past stuff, my past trauma from the military and all that stuff that is put to bed. Like I have done all the counseling and all I, I went through cognitive processing therapy. I see a psychiatrist every three months just to touch in and brush up. Uh, you know, I'm on uh, some a mild, fairly mild dose of two, uh, three different medications, one for nightmares, one for focus, and one for just the mood stabilizer. So it's in its low dose. I just need to like level out a little bit more sometimes because otherwise I'll get more. I don't, I don't get manic and I don't get, uh, I, I do get depressive though. So gotta be careful with that. As long as I'm on the meds, I'm good. Um, if I'm off the meds, like I said, I get a little paranoid. I start thinking like people are out to get me when I realized it was a problem was when my, some, my family and I have this family chat and on an iPhone, if someone copies a message from you or keeps it, it says someone kept this message. My brain read it as, oh my God, they're, they're keeping stuff from me. And if you knew my family, we're all super close knit. We're all brutally honest with each other. We all check each other when we're getting out of line. Uh, I was very, very fortunate to have a family like this, very close knit. And, um, you know, I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, what the fuck? Cause I had sent them a text or something and all of them were like, bro, are you okay? Like, this isn't like you. So that's when I realized, oh shit, I need, I need some medication. So anyways, long story. Um, but I don't get violent. I don't have a history of violence. I've never punched a woman. I will talk my way out of a fight before I ever throw a punch because A, it's not worth it. We're both going to get fucking hurt. B, uh, I don't want to go to jail. And this is a society we live in. Probably going to go to jail. It just is what it is. So I try not to do that. And I make sure I try not to put myself in situations where that might happen. I'm not an idiot. So 
<laughs> At least I don't think I am. You never know. Probably, I, I do have my blind spots though, and with Tanya, that was that was one of them. Because, um, oh, that was the other thing too, man. When we first started communicating, like, I she's she was like, I really like the way you communicate. She's like, but you don't have to like preface things with, don't take it this way. This is what I mean. Because she's like, I'm I'm not that person. She's like, I know you've probably been with girls that are like that before. But she's like, I'm not that girl. So I just just I just took her word for it and didn't do that anymore. I probably should have kept doing it. So, what are you gonna do, man? Hindsight's twenty twenty. Like, all we can do is learn and grow. But if she doesn't give a chance to to grow, then I don't know what to do, uh, other than move on, which is what I had to do. Because what am I, what else am I gonna do, man? Like, it just is what it is. So, uh, I think it was the next day. Uh, she sent me an email and it broke my heart because she really laid out how she felt. She really laid out why she loved me and it made logical sense to me. And I was like, basically I was like, holy fuck. I didn't realize she felt that way. And I didn't realize that, uh, the extent to how I made her feel. So she reached out and she was like, I think it was at like eight o'clock at night and, um, or something like that. And she was she was like, uh, you left your meds here and your overnight bag, do you need them? I was like, well, I can go another night without my meds because I was trying to give her some space, which I fucking shouldn't have done. Um, and she was like, well, I can meet you halfway or come up there. I was like, no, I'll, I'll drive up there. She was like, as long as you know you're you're just picking up your meds. I was like, yeah, of course. So um, drive up there, leave the car running, open the door or uh, knock on the door. She opens it. She's clearly emotionally distraught, like way more than I expected. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, can I give you a hug? And she was like, I don't know. She was like, I don't know if you're going to pick up my the, your stuff and walk out the door and I'm never going to see you again. And I was like, no. I was like, I'm here to fucking stay. Like, that's that's entirely up to you. So she ran up to me. She gave me a big hug. She started crying. I started crying because I felt like a douche. And uh, we sat, you know, she sat on a chair. I purposely put myself on the floor next to her in a very vulnerable spot, you know, because I didn't want to make her feel threatened or anything like that. Crap. And, um, I'm pretty sure her roommate was there because I definitely heard his chair squeaking a couple times in the other room, just chilling. So that's another thing, man. Like, did they, did she really think I was going to hurt her? Like, Jesus Christ, man. Like this woman has trauma, like triggers. So, and that's, I mean, looking back at this, I'm like, she needs counseling. She needs help. She needs to talk through this. Because this is not good. Like, she can't go through... She can go through life like this. She even told me through email that she knows she's going to be alone and die a quote-unquote spinster. And I was like, no one deserves that. Because I told her shortly after we met, she said the one thing... Because one of the potential red flags was that she was 40 and had never been married. And I've been married twice. And uh, my first wife was... Uh, she was bipolar and borderline personality disorder, which actually was what got me interested in psychi uh, psychology because I'd never done that before. I'd never been exposed to that before. So that was a mess, but uh, I got out of it unscathed. And uh, I mean, she put a knife to my throat at one point. So it was interesting. But anyways, um, uh, my second wife, I've known since I was five years old. Uh, we started dating when I was still in the military. She wouldn't marry me while I was in the military. So that was another reason I got out of 10 years. And uh, it just is what it is. So, uh, but the problem is, I got a vasectomy at 23. She knew it. Um, we'd had that discussion, but we both remember that discussion differently, which sucks uh, because we uh, both had very good paying jobs and um, we were making about the same amount of money, which was great. And we built a house up in Dunedin, Florida, here with based on one of our incomes. And, uh, it just sucks. And then she, you know, so we had all the puzzle pieces of life put together and then she wanted a kid. And I was like, look, so we went to counseling for like a year and a half. And at the end of the day, I was like, look, I was like, I, I just, if, if I give in and have a kid with you, a, it's going to be a $40,000 surgery to get this refixed. B, um, if it's even possible, that's for a chance. Uh, B, if you give in and don't have a kid, you're going to resent me when you hit your forties or 50, you know, forties or fifties. So I was like, you are still fairly young. She's, I think she was like 35 when we got divorced. I was like, you need to go find some or 30. No, she was younger. So 32, maybe 32. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was like, you need to go find someone to have kids with, which kind of annoys me because it's been like maybe nine years and she still doesn't have any kids. So I'm like, did you really like just want it all? Like, I don't know. 
or she can't find a dude to have kids with, which I totally get. There's a lot of fucking assholes out there. So I'm not one of them. Um, I'm cheeky and I speak my mind and I have a very small to no filter, but I'm not a fucking dick. When, when push comes to shove, I'm solid in relationships. I don't fuck around, you know, and that was the other thing, like the, the, the pool party, uh, naked pool party stuff. She was not into that. So I gave that up for her. I never told her that. And please don't tell her that. But, um, I, I gave that up because, and I talked to the group and they agreed. They were like, well, if your partner's not into it, then probably shouldn't do it. I'm like, yep, that was my thought process. So, um, I was willing to do that for her. You know, it's, it's, it's what you do. So like I said, I could li literally see a future with this woman. Um, and that's the thing. I, you know, when we first met, she was like, guys either want to break my back or marry me. And I'm like, I'm not going to ask you to marry me and I'm not going to break your back. I was like, if we're together in 10 years or something. Cause that was the other thing. She was like, I, I do miss the fact that I didn't have my big day. I was like, Hey, if we're still together in 10 years, you know, we'll buy each other rings, do the ceremony without the fucking paperwork. And, uh, you know, have the after party or whatever. And she was like, okay. So it was cute. She was really cute. That's the thing. She's such, she's got such a masculine energy, which really is attractive to me, but she can be so adorably like girly at the same time. She's got these moments, which are just adorable, which is awesome. Um, so anyways, uh, she started saying something like along the lines of like, she, she was afraid that I might hit her at some point. And I was like, from a clap on the back? I was like, that's not a pattern of behavior. I was like, we've known each other for three and a half months and we've spent maybe 20 days together total. I was like, that's, I was like the fact that we've gotten this far in 20 days, that's quick. That's really, really quick. That is super quick for me. Um, I mean, with Donna, we were together for about a year before we both admitted to each other that we loved each other. I mean, it took a while. And I had, we had already known each other for a year before that. So this was quick. You know, maybe that was part of the issue. Maybe she was got scared. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, so she was like, you don't, you don't trust women and all that stuff. I'm like, it's not that I don't trust women. It's that I know how a majority of women work. I was like, it's pretty basic. I mean, we've got, we've got, uh, correlational studies. We have all this data. I mean, if you look at the, if you look it up, Look up the data from Tinder sometime if you if you want to see something eye opening. Like we've got all this stuff. Um, it just is what it is. Like I was like, and maybe I shouldn't talk about it around you because I know and that was the other thing. I was like, you're acting like this is like I'm personally attacking you on this stuff. I was like, I know you're not this person. That's why I'm discussing it with you because I can. You know, like, but I don't know. Apparently, I, I I've pretty much stopped doing it because it's not worth it. And um, like I said, people just. People have a hard time entertaining a thought without accepting it. Let's put it that way. And um, I assumed, probably incorrectly, that Tanya was one of those people that could entertain thoughts without accepting them. Maybe she can, maybe she can't, I don't know. Clearly it was triggering something. So, I mean, at the Halloween party, she even said that I was talking, shitting on women again or something like that, which I don't remember that at all. I remember talking to her friends. I was trying to be open and friendly uh, I don't remember talking about relationships at all, but she swears that I did. And I'm like, I was really fucking actively trying not to do that. But I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. So I objectively read and I finally sent her, you know, she sent me a, a, a email back and was like, the, the title of it was no. And then she went through and she was like, this is, you know, I, I've been lying to myself over the past couple days and like all this crap. And I'm like, this is a bunch of either a bunch of excuses or you are coming from a fear trauma based place. I was like, because I was like, this is insane. I was like, you're, you're literally talking about how you think I'm going to hit you at some point or something like that. Or you're going to get beat up by me at some point. I was like, that's nuts. I was like, you literally wanted to spar with me like two weeks ago. Thank God I didn't, you know, cause she was like, we should square up sometime. I was like, okay. Uh, I was like, we should do that. Thank God I didn't. Cause that's the other thing she said that trauma ther or uh, exposure therapy works really well for her. And I was like, that's interesting because it's usually, it's not very evidence-based and uh, trauma th or exposure therapy isn't usually the best way to go, you know, especially with someone who's intelligent and is in their head and like all this stuff. Usually it's cognitive processing therapy, maybe cognitive behavioral therapy, but not exposure therapy. But I was like, hey, if it works for you, well, I'll tell you what, after seeing this play out, exposure therapy is very bad for her 
she should not be uh, doing exposure therapy. It's it's one thing, you know, when she was talking about she didn't like the weights falling in the gym. Okay, that's that's fine. You know, you expose yourself to that. Whatever. Uh, another thing, if you've been beat up by your exes and now you want to spar with someone who's your partner, like. I mean, you go 50%, obviously, in the ring, but stuff still happens. Like, I, I wouldn't do that with her. Like, there's no way. I was like, now that I've seen this interaction play out, I was like, I would trigger you all over again. So, um, you know, she was finally like, I need to space. Oh, that was the other thing. She was like, I need to set an example for women. I was like, these girls, honestly, I mean, I haven't known Tanya that long. I obviously haven't known her friends that long. But I do know how... Now, I, I do have to remember that Tanya is not a typical woman, so she probably hasn't surrounded herself by typical friends, but I have not observed them interact long enough to know. But I was like, I know that when stuff goes down in relationships, females are hype men. They will hype you up and hype you up and hype you up, and they will talk shit on the dude, and then, you know, they'll get you to break up with them. I was like, and some of those girls will try to move in on that guy. I was like, it's fucked up. It's happened before. I've watched it go down. And that was the other thing too. Like when I told her I was, you know, we were, we were both wounded animals or whatever. I was talking about Donna. I was talking about that kind of stuff. I wasn't talking about, I, I've never really been burned uh, by a, a woman before because I've been smart enough to avoid those women, you know? So like, Jesus. Except for my first wife. But that, I mean, that was not her fault. That was mental health. So, and that's what I really feel is going on with Tanya is it's not that she has mental health issues. It's that she's got a lot of trauma and it's fear-based. And instead of overcoming her fear and moving through it, because that was the other thing, she said she feel, doesn't feel safe in the world anymore. And I was like, girl, you've got four years of Muay Thai under your belt. You said you got your shorts. All right. So that means something. Uh, you've got firearms. I was like, and you're a strong woman and you're not small. I was like, you've got more going on for you safety wise than most guys do. So like, I don't know what to tell you. I was like, that's, that's gotta be on you. I was like, I would never hit you. Like I would never punch her. Like I was so careful with her, even in the bedroom, man. Like, and I, I'm going to try not to get into details, but, um, you know, she liked the, uh, she never liked the, uh, the female leather harness, right? Uh, but she said she liked the male harness because she started watching American Horror Story, the latest season. And I was like, well, you know, I have one of those, right? She was like, oh, awesome. So she came over. Uh, we put that on her. She looks really good in it. And um, uh, she wanted me to, you know, fuck her, bend her over the couch and, and grab the fucking harness and go to town. Well, I was even careful then. Like, I got up to about maybe 75% of, like, full force. And she was like, okay, that's too much. Back off. So, like, even in the bedroom, like, I don't lose control and shit. Um, like I said, I always, I mean, the one time, the one time in my life that I really considered hitting a woman was my first wife. And it was because she was going fucking crazy. And it was after she put a knife to my throat and I was leaving because I was walking out of my own house and she stood in the way and she saw the look in my eye and she got the fuck out of the way. Thank God. Because I honestly cannot tell you if I would not have at least shoved her at that point. Um, but that would have been for me to get out, out of the fucking house. I was in like fight or flight mode at that point. I was like, I'm either getting out of here or shit's going down. So, um, I will always walk away, but anyways, um, so yeah, man, I, I just, I don't know. I've, I've got my own issues, but when it, like I said, not when it comes to relationships. So I, I know what I want. That was the other thing too. She was like, I don't, I don't think I can be in a relationship with anybody. And part of me was thinking, well, you read my bio, <laughs> like, you knew exactly what I was looking for. Like a part of you wanted this, wanted a long-term relationship, you know, but if she feels like she has to set an example for women because I clapped her on the back in front of a couple of her friends and then the word got out because I'm sure people fucking talked and gossiped. And okay, so that was the other thing. So she said she needed space. So I was like, okay, so I respected that because I usually texted her good morning every day. So I was like, uh, after we met up at the house, um, and I left cause I, I did, I, I wanted to stay with her, but you know, I knew that probably wasn't a good idea, uh, at least for her. Cause she, she had already set that boundary that you know, I wouldn't be staying the night. So I didn't want to do that. Oh yeah. Assets and, uh, assets and liabilities. So, um, there were several nights where she wanted to sleep in bed with me 
but I wouldn't let her because I told her, I was like, we had this discussion. You said I needed you to be an asset, so I needed to keep you accountable and make sure that you're sleeping from 11.30 to, to uh, 7, 11.30 to 7, I guess, every day. Um, so I tried really hard to do that. Like, we'd get talking on the phone, and I'd realize it was like past 11.30, and I'd be like, hey, we need to go because it's bedtime. So I really tried to support her on all that stuff. Um, you know, I know she's not really into gifts, so, like, I brought up... Uh, uh, a bunch of chicken and, and steak, you know, because I, I thought that would be fun and um, she liked that. And, you know, I, I try to be a thoughtful guy. I try to be, and that's the other thing too. Like there's a difference between a nice guy and a good guy. I try to be a good guy. I'm not always a nice guy. A nice guy sometimes has to be a little bit of an asshole to get his point across or something like that. But it, it is what it is. And a nice guy is not going to, uh, or a good guy is not going to do shit like expecting shit in return and that that was another reason why i tried to smooth that over because i realized oh i'm being a fucking nice guy right now like fuck so i'm i'm doing what i preach against <laughs> but anyways um so that was that was the other thing i told her i was like look processing all these emotions this is new for me too i was like i am not used to doing this and like i said i won't do it again because it's it's not you know she made a comment on her page about emotional abuse I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, if me talking about relationships is emotional abuse, I was like, A, you need to look up the term emotional abuse because that ain't it. Um, B, holy shit. Like, if if me being open and honest and vulnerable with you, talking about this stuff that is on my mind constitutes emotional abuse, well, I, I don't know what to do with that. Like, I just don't. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just... And that was the other thing. She put some snarky, like, sorry, I forgot you, bro. And I was like, so that's, anyway, so I gave her a couple days. I got, and that was the other thing too. I'd gotten off Instagram the day of the competition because I knew when, when she first wanted me to get on Instagram, I told her I deleted all my social media. That shit triggers me because I see a bunch of crappy people doing crappy stuff to each other. That's so dumb and so easily fixed. And I can't help but comment on it. Like, I just can't fucking help it. And so I knew, you know, the, the gains. The gains is the one that I made all the comments on. Because um, I'd asked her what's a good meme page to follow. So she said the gains. Should have never followed him. <laughs> or her, or whoever that is. Um, don't follow him anymore, because I, I don't need any of that crap. So, but I'd literally gotten off Instagram, because I was like, if this is a trigger, and this is going to ruin our relationship, I need to get off Instagram. Like, period. Like, I don't like social media to begin with. It's a dumpster fire. It's a place full of hate. I hate it. Like, I don't want to fall into that mindset again. So, um, so it was too late. You know, I had gotten off Instagram too late. So a couple days after I gave her space, I was curious. I was like, I wonder. I was like, she's passed every other test. I was like, this is the last fucking test. Let's see, see if she passed it. Because several weeks prior, uh, when we first met, about a week after we met, we were talking about the whole online dating thing. And because I'd been on there for two, maybe three days, and that was it. I did not delete my account. I purposely left my account open because you can see when the last time someone was on there. And I wanted her to know that I wasn't fucking around because we talked specifically about monkey branching. Specifically. She had no idea what monkey branching was. I was like, okay, so think about this. I was like, think about uh, you and I are together, right? But I'm still on field because I'm looking for something better. And I'm going to keep doing my thing with you while secretly doing this other thing with this other person until I have a good grip on them. And I know they're not going anywhere because they're quote unquote, and they're quote unquote better than you, hotter, whatever, any of those things. Um, and then, uh, uh, fuck man, it's, dude, I'm, it's hard to keep my train of thought these days, especially when I'm talking about this stuff it works me up a little bit. Um, So I asked her, I was like, how would you feel about that? She was like, well, that's shitty. I was like, right, that is monkey branching. I was like, a lot of men and women do it. It's horrible. I was like, women tend to do it more because it's, it's all about the security thing and their biological drive and all that stuff. That's the other thing. I look at things from an evolutionary perspective, a biological perspective. I understand why people do this. It sickens me that they cannot overcome their own biological urges with their prefrontal cortex and get past this. But apparently they can't. I mean, literally there was a... a friend of mine, he had to pick up his niece from high school, from a homecoming dance. And, um, I was, I was just watching people coming out and there was this big group of guys and all of them were by themselves, except one guy, the one guy that had a girl on his arm wore the douchiest clothes with the douchiest sunglasses at night. 
and was saying the douchiest things. And I'm like, oh my God, these girls haven't learned yet. Like we have the internet, we have all this information. Like, why are you getting with assholes? Why are you getting with, with these people? You know, so I don't know. I'm just, I might come across as a dick sometimes, but I usually try to mean it in the best way and I'm not purposely doing it and I'm just being honest. So, you know, and I'll always apologize if I'm in the wrong. I, I usually hope to be proven wrong most of the time. And sometimes I am, which is great, but more often than not, I'm, I'm not proven wrong. And it fucking sucks, man. Cause like, I expect better of this world, but it's the world we have to live in. And that's, that's another thing I, I tell people. I'm like, there's the world you want to live in. There's the world you should live in. And there's the world you have to live in. I was like, and you got to find a balance between those. So it just is what it is. Um, yeah. Cause that was the other thing, man. Tanya, uh, like I did tell her at one point, I was like, if you, if we break up, I was like, I'm, I'm done looking for another relationship. I'm just, I'm not going to look for another one. Cause I actively looked for one this time, you know, and I'm, I'm just not going to look for another one. Um, I found one. It kind of fell into my lap. So it was about, uh, two weeks before we broke up, this woman reached out and we were talking back and forth. And, uh, like I said, I was gonna, I was gonna decline. Um, oh, the woman that I, th I was thought about it though, dude. Oh my God. So after Tony and I broke up, we started flirting back and forth and, um, it turned out it was a guy I know who's bisexual who has the exact same name and, and very similar phone number of this other person. <laughs> So thank God I called before I we, I went over there to hook up because he answered the phone and I was like, oh shit, it's you. <laughs> so he was like, yeah, I thought you were coming over to the dark side. <laughs> it's like, no, sorry, man. I didn't mean to lead you on and all that stuff. But anyways, uh, this other girl just kind of like, I've known her for a while and she's, she's a good person and um, she lost her husband of 10 years to cancer. So, you know, she's not, she's... She knows what she wants. She's ethically non-monogamous, but she wants a primary partner who, you know, um, and I, I don't know if it's going to last because there is a sexual compatibility there. She's got, um, uh, endometriosis or something like that. Uh, I forget what, it, I forget the exact word, but basically it affects about 2%, between two and 10% of the female population and it makes sex painful, which fucking sucks because I'm not exactly the smallest dude in the world. So it, it kind of blows because I do like her. She's an awesome person. She's very smart. Um, but, you know, she's got that sexual compatibility issue. I don't know if we're going to be able to get over that. So we're trying, though. It's working on it. That aside. Um, so, yeah, after I sent Tanya, after Tanya sent me the final email and, like, she ended it by, by saying, leave me alone. I was like, well, I guess we're done because she made it pretty clear that she was scared of me. And I was like, I don't know why. I was like, because I'm bigger and stronger. I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, you fucking have guns, for Christ's sake. But anyways, um, and yeah, I definitely, I was, I was frustrated, man. Like, I'll send you the text if you want. Um, I was like, for an athlete, you give up really easily in relationships. And then she sent me a bunch of other stuff that was like making up more excuses from what it seemed like. Although reading back, I think she was legitimately scared that I would hurt her at some point. Um, which is fucking crazy, man. That breaks my fucking heart. I, I just don't. I can't prove a negative. Like, how am I supposed to prove to someone that I'll never hit them? How am I supposed to do that? I have no past behaviors of, of hitting anyone. I had a fucking lizard on my car the other day. It's happened before. I pulled over to the side of the road and got the lizard off because I didn't want to kill him. Like, it's not, it's not who I am as a person. So, huh. but, uh, yeah, so you know, I told her, uh, you know, she sent me a bunch of other stuff and I was frustrated and I was like, whatever, you're a quitter. Cause at that point I was just like, this is, this is fucking bullshit. I was like, I'm getting accused of stuff that I haven't done. I was like, she's seen red flags that aren't there. Cause that's what I told her too. I was like, look, I'm, I talk about male female dynamics. I know it's controversial. I was like, but I have the balls to do that instead of most of these dudes that shut the fuck up because they want to get pussy. I was like, I'm not that guy. I was like, I, I want to see if you can entertain thoughts without accepting them, I want to make sure I'm with a, a uh, uh, psychologically strong individual, you know? So I want someone that can debate and bring up opposite points because it's very rare. I, I, I talk about this with my sisters. Um, they're awesome. I've, I've talked with them through all of my relationships, really. Like, they know who I am. And uh, they'll get on my case, too. They'll check me when I get a little out of line uh, as far as talking too much about uh, male-female stuff. But yeah, they'll bring up points about men. Cause that was, that was the other thing. Like, um, I sent her final email 
and I, I tried to wrap it all up and I was like, I don't buy your reasons for breaking up. I was like, I think you're coming from a fear-based, trauma-based perspective. And I was like, um, you know, I think she needs counseling. I think she needs, I think she really does need counseling. I mean, she's living with her ex. Uh, she clearly has not gotten over other guys beating her up. So, and I don't know how many guys beat her up. Apparently it was more than this one guy, which makes me furious at men that do this shit. Like they belong to be fucking buried under the prison. But, um, what am I going to do about it? So and that was the other thing, dude, literally, Oh my God. So literally as a counselor, the, so as a counselor, you have to see what your biases are. There's certain people that you can't work with, right? I can work with child molesters all day long. I despise them, but at least I understand scientifically where that's coming from and I can try to help them find work or whatever. Thank God I only had to work with a couple of those fuckers, but I could do that. I cannot work with guys that are fucking wife beaters. That is, that is a, I can't do it. Like I don't respect them. I just, nope, that is not, no. Cause I want to fucking punch them in the face. You talk, you want to talk about punching someone in the face. That's who I want to punch in the face is those guys. So I had another coworker that he couldn't deal with the child molesters because he has kids. That was a trigger for, that was, he couldn't do it, but he could deal with the wife beaters. So we kind of traded off on that stuff. But, um, so there you go. Like, I guess that's one evidence based, whatever, for what it's worth. Apparently nothing. Um, so I did break down, you know, I, I, I tried to be objective. I gave it like 12 hours. I went back through, I read all her emails I sent her a final voicemail. I probably shouldn't have. I probably shouldn't have reread the text. And I tried to keep a level voice, but I couldn't. I broke down halfway through it. But I basically told her, I was like, look, I was like, I've read back through your text objectively as I could. I was like, I really do think that you think I'm going to hurt you at some point. I was like, I was like, I know I help on women a lot in relationships, but I also know how men work. And I was like, and I know that there are attractive guys. I was like, I know there's an attraction differential between us. I know this. You're not dumb. I'm not dumb. And I was like, and I started thinking, and there was that night, because it was a night where she was really weird, and she had texted me and asked me if I if I thought she was pretty. And this was like maybe two weeks before we broke up, so pretty, pretty fresh. And uh, I was like, yeah, you're beautiful. I was like, you're beautiful to me, and that's all that matters. I was like, if any girls start getting catty towards you, they can fuck off. So she was like, no, I mean, do you think I'm pretty in the face? And I repeated, I was like, I think you're beautiful to me, every part of you, that's all that matters. Like... But I told her, I was like, I know there is a an attraction. Because, uh, you know, I had friends of mine, they were like, I'm surprised you're with her. And I was like, yeah, because I'm not a fucking shallow asshole, you fucking idiot. Because I have friends of mine that, that they they just, they they need a certain level of, like, attraction. It's bullshit, is what it is. It's fucking bullshit. You know, I'm looking for a good, a good person, a good people, not, you know, crap. So... <sighs> And that was the other thing too. Like I do have a, uh, a friend with benefits, which Tanya and I talks about. And there were several weekends where, you know, thank God it worked out because uh, her primary partner had happened to make plans. But there were several weekends where I was going to hang out with her. And I broke that to go hang out with Tanya because Tanya, I looked at Tanya as my primary partner and she didn't like that. But, so I, I stopped using the term primary partner. I don't think she noticed though. Um, because, and I just started, you know, I referred to her, to other people, I just referred to her as my partner. But I told her, I was like, the reason you're my primary partner right now is literally just because I'm spending more time with you than I am with anybody else. I was like, that's all that means right now. But, you know, and that's the other thing. I think she's scared of commitment. Uh, that's why I talked to you that one day, because there were some things she was saying, and it made me really wonder. I was like, is she ever going to be able to commit to a relationship? Because you can be ethically non-monogamous, but you still have to commit to relationships. You still have to commit to one or more people. If you're not committing, you're single. You might as well be single. Like the commitment is everything. And that's that's what annoys me when people talk about uh, people that are polyamorous that just don't want to make a commitment and are scared of commitment and just want to like do whatever the fuck they want all the time. Like that's not how that works at all if you're doing it, quote unquote, correctly. Now, it doesn't really matter how you're doing it. If you're a closed group of people and everyone's enthusiastically consenting, then obviously, yeah, that's fine. That do you, do you. But uh, to be polyamorous, it's fucking challenging. It's hard. It takes a lot more communication than it does a regular relationship. And, um, you know, you have to be willing and open to deal with jealousy feelings and feelings of um, 
possessiveness and all that stuff. Because that was the other thing. She would, um, uh, fucking blank. And Tanya would say, like, you can't have me, you know, or you can't possess me or something like that. I'd be like, yeah, I know. I was like, I would never try to do that, nor, like, I'm not asking you to that. And that's the other thing, too. I was like, I'm not asking to be the first priority in your life. I'm asking to be a priority in your life. That's all I need. I don't need much. I'm a pretty simple dude. I've got my life figured out. I'm fucking retired. I, I, I have like $6,400 a month coming in between everything. Half of it gets adjusted for inflation every year. Like, I'm building a $419,000 house. I've got my life together. And that was the other thing I told her is like, I don't need you and you don't need me. And that makes me want to make this work even more because we don't need each other, which is fucking amazing. Like how often do you run? You're a dude. How often do you run into women that truly don't need a guy? Truly. It's very rare. There's a lot of them that say they don't, but when push comes to shove and you really get into the relationship, they do, you know, which it is what it is. Like, why I say be an island, man. This is why I tell guys. It's like, be an island. I was like, there's a lot of women out there that are just boats. Like, Tanya's an island. Tanya's an, uh, a fucking island, which is awesome. And we talked about this too. I was like, uh, you know, a lot of women are boats. They'll tie up to your island. They'll explore the island. They'll get bored and then they'll move on to another island. I was like, it just is what it is. And that's another thing I told Tanya. I was like, look, I was like, there's a, there's a phrase that uh, she's not yours, it's just your turn. I was like, I'm never gonna ask you to be mine alone. Like, I'm not, because that's the thing. She was like, I don't know if I can commit to one person. It's like, I'm not asking for that. Would that be awesome? Maybe, I don't know. I was monogamous for seven years. I don't know if I could keep doing it. Like, I feel like at some point I probably would have cheated on her. So I honestly, like, I'd have to be honest with myself and I don't know. Like, I'm, I might've been able to be monogamish with Donna, uh, and we talked about that, but cause she had her secondary partner too. Um, which I, I had to break the news to him when she died. That was rough. That was, I didn't want to meet him that way, but I did. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Tanya needs some help. She's got some stuff to deal with. The fact that I'm a solid individual got my issues. That's the other thing. I shared some of the stuff I'd done within the military with her. And I made a comment, like we were talking about, um, I think we we're talking about like, uh, people that are paranoid or, uh, conspiracy theories or something. And I mentioned that I have a female friend of mine who's an ex-Marine and she's always like worried about being on a watch list. And I was like, we are on a watch list. I was like, we should be on a watch list. I was like, think about it between you, me, and one other person with the training, we could literally go through as a three man team and clear out of school before the cops showed up. I was like, that is Yes, we should be on a watch list because God forbid we fucking snap and go crazy. Like, that's why I'm on medication. So I don't do that, you know, because that was the other thing she was worried about. She was like, well, what happens when you get off your meds? I was like, I get paranoid. I don't get violent. Another thing I told her, I was like, and that's the thing. Maybe I just shared too much with her. Maybe because when I, sh when I mentioned that thing about the school, she was like, oh, that's good to know. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, maybe I just scared her. So, but it is what it is. That's the thing, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard as a military person to talk to civilians like you would another military person because they just, I mean, when I first got out of the military, man, I'd be in a room full of people and I'd be talking and suddenly like the room would be just totally quiet. And I shut the room down for, I don't know, I don't know if I was being loud. I don't know if I said something that was like, everyone else thought was like, what the fuck? I don't know. But anyways, uh, that doesn't happen that much anymore. And I, I did purposely like lower my voice a lot because I used to be much louder. So, uh, I got a buddy of mine that's half deaf in one ear and, and that guy is loud as fuck. Like he, he's getting better, but it's to the point where people are annoyed. I'm like, bro, you got to use your, I was like, I'm just going to tell you inside voice. I was like, when you're talking too loud, he's like, all right, thanks. But yeah, he's a good dude. He's got his own issues and he just broke up with a girl that I told him not to get with. I was like, have your fun, but do not get in a relationship with her. She's poison in a relationship. I was like, she's a good person, but in a relationship, she's poison. He got with her for three years and then, uh, finally realized I was like she was cheating on him and like she just he had no self-esteem left it was awful that's the thing I see if any of my relationship trauma it's from society it's from like looking out at what's going on when I got out of the military man I got used to uh, I was active duty so I got used to working with in civil engineer so I got used to working with actual strong independent women like people like Tanya that would just kick ass and take names and move on and um you know, I, I just assumed that's how it was because I went literally from being homeschooled 
and sh totally sheltered, living out in the middle of the woods in a trailer to the military. So that was a huge wake-up call. Um, it's just, I don't know, man. There's a lot. I have a good family, like, I have money coming in. I don't have to worry about income. I'm level. I'm fairly decent in bed, especially if the woman's communicative. I'm willing to give and take. I'm a complete switch, just like Tanya. I'd never run into a full-on switch before. I love Donna to death, but she was very uh, subordinate, and I don't like to be dominant 100% of the time. It's just, it's exhausting. So, um, yeah, man, it's just, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know how long I've been talking. Let's see. Oh, an hour and five minutes. Jesus. All right. Well, if you make it to the end of this, um, I love Tanya to death. I don't want to see her be alone because that's she told me she was going to be alone and die a spinster. I was like, no one deserves that. I was like, I, I know you're not going to come back to me. I was like, because you don't fucking trust me for some reason. I was like, I, I don't get it. Like, I just because she wouldn't, she wouldn't even. I don't know, man. I don't know if she even knows. She said she, like I said, she said she didn't feel safe in the world. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? So. Like, all I wanted to do, you know, because she left a bunch of stuff at my house. All I wanted to do was, like, go, you know, when I, when I realized how much I'd impacted her, all I wanted to do is go up there and hold her, you know, and, like, reassure that everything was okay. Because that was, on the flip side, she said one of the things that she loves about me is my calming energy and, like, being calm around her. I'm like, well, oh, it's just someone walking. I'm like, uh, well, how, how do you go from that to, like, being scared of me? Like, I, I don't know. So... We've only had 20 days together. I had 30 seconds of being an asshole and that negated the other like point and it wasn't even to a point that could be violent. Like, I just, I don't know. I just don't know. So, I just don't know, man. Well, I did tell her that it was, it was up to her and apparently she made her decision, which fucking blows. And I mean, I didn't get to sleep till 6.30 this morning because I was it was still like every now and then I'll just start perseverating over it and like trying to play everything back in my head and figure out what the fuck went wrong. And, uh, I don't know, man. I think it was a combination of a lot of things. I don't think I should have gone up there that day. And, uh, you know, I just, um, uh, I don't know. Shouldn't open my fucking mouth. So even though it's how I felt, that doesn't matter. You know, and I honestly didn't know how I felt. I thought I knew how I felt, but I was still figuring all that out. So, which is why I tried to smooth it over, but clearly that wasn't effective. And like I said, I'm sure she's got little birds fucking tweet, 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 tweet in her ear. This happens all the time. Bugs the shit out of me. I had people whisper in my ear. I literally had dudes being like, dude, you can do way better and she ain't worth it. And I was like, fuck you, bro. I was like, you don't know this chick. I was like, this woman is worth it. So I was like, she's worth trying. I was like, I know relationships can get messy, but she's worth fucking trying. But if Tanya's not wanting to commit to a, a, a relationship, even if it's a non-monogamous relationship, and because that's the thing, like I told her, I was like, I was like, I'll take the scraps of time that you have. I don't care. It's enough for me at this point. I was like, if it becomes not enough, then we'll have that conversation and we'll figure out whether I need to look for a primary partner and you be a secondary. And if you're okay with that, which, you know, it seems like she would be, um, but I'm not going to find another person like her, man. Like it just, it doesn't exist. Like, and that's the other thing. She was like, well, you'll find another girl like me. I was like, I really won't. I was like, I don't think you understand how rare of a, of a human you are. So I just don't, man. Just is what it is. Yeah. When she tried to pull the trust thing on me, I'm like, bro, I trusted you with a strap on. Like that's literally the most intimate thing a guy can do with a woman, like, and for a woman. It's like, that's. I don't know, man. Fucking blows. But anyways, I hope this explains more stuff. Like I said, if you want me to send you all the stuff, I, I can. But it's going to be a lot of listening. So it's just a lot of factors, man. And I, I can't go through and listen to it again. It's too much to unpack. I can't wrap my brain around it anymore. I just, I'm tired. So I'm going to spend Thanksgiving with this new girl. She's got a lot of her and our, friend, our friends are coming over. So it'll be good. Um... I baked all the stuff I needed to bake today, so that was good. But, uh, yeah, I, at this point, you know, um, I'm going forward with zero expectations, and I'm just going to relax and enjoy myself like I always fucking do. And um, 
Oh, that was the other thing, because Tanya, she left a bunch of stuff here, man. She left her a shirt here. She left a blanket here, clothes, a dildo, like a bunch of stuff. And she was like, you can just throw it out. And that, to me, says a lot about a person, like, which made me caution again, dude. That's the thing, though. She's passed so many tests. I think, I think she's just got some small shortcomings that she's not realizing how it's coming across. And that's, I think, the biggest thing. When someone at the end of a relationship, if it's going to end and you're like, well, just throw my shit out and I'll throw your stuff out. No. Okay. You either bring it back over or you mail it. Like there's one of the two, but she said she didn't want her stuff back. So I told her, I was like, look, if you don't want your stuff back, I was like, I'll keep it. I'll use it. It'll be a rem reminder to me never to give my heart away so quick to anyone and not to be emotionally vulnerable with anyone again. You know, not like that. And, uh, just won't share. I just won't share. Cause I can't, I, these apparently, apparently people can't take it. So I can't help that, I, but I can help what I share with people. And I just will not be sharing that again because I, I can't, I just can't do it. Can't do it, man. I, I can't keep giving my heart away and having it fucking stomped on, especially for something dumb like this. And it's, I know it's not dumb. It's dumb to me because I've got the training behind it, but I know it's not dumb to her. I know for her, it's very real. And that's why I'm saying is she needs counseling. She needs therapy. She needs to figure this out because she cannot go through life like this. If she goes through life scared of partners, she will be alone. She'll make sure she stays alone. And that's the other thing I told her. I was like, look, you only have so much time in this world. For example, you can have a child, you can have money, or I'm sorry, you can have time, you can have money, and you can have energy. Or you can have a kid. You can't get all three, you know, or all four. You can't have everything in this life to the fullest extent. Yes, you can have a career and have a kid, but you're compromising at some point. Like you, you are, it just is what it is. I've talked to enough parents and I've talked to my own brother who has a kid and he's very upfront and honest with that. So, but anyways, all right, man. Well, I could probably keep talking, but it just, um, it's all I got and I got to go shower. So I hope this clarifies things and explains things, at least from my standpoint, I have no idea what was said. I really don't care. I just, the truth always comes out in the end and that's what I have to remember. It doesn't matter because the truth always fucking comes out in the end. So just is what it is, but it kills me. It fucking kills me. So it does suck. Cause like I said, honestly, I could have, I could, I could see a future with her.